time. Forty years we've been together. Forty years of mornings and evenings, warm summer days and cold winter nights, loud laughter, quiet support, and a long friendship. Forty years of breakfasts at this table. He's sitting opposite me, like he always does. He's munching slowly on the cornflakes, eyes unfocused into the middle distance, thoughts somewhere a long way away. I take a mouthful of my tea, and we sit in silence for a while. I'm sorry, Eric, he says. I look up. His eyes are full of tears, and he's looking straight at me. I'm sorry, he says again. I really tried, but I just don't think I can go on like this. Eric, that was the name of his first boyfriend. A traveling salesman with an ex-wife and a charming little daughter. They met in... You do understand, don't you? I do care about you. I really do. But, but... I put down my tea and move to his side of the table, taking his frail hand gently in mine. It's all right, I tell him. There's no need to say anything. We knew it was a gamble, and it didn't pay off. Just move on, keep the good times with you, and don't hold on to the bad. I don't regret trying. The tears overflow down his cheeks, and he breathes a juddering sigh of relief. We hug, holding on for minutes. Then I let him down, smile reassuringly, and go back to my seat. The real Eric had given him a black eye. That was sixty years ago. He goes distractedly back to his cornflakes, as though a conversation had been derailed in the middle of a sentence, and he was trying to find the thread again. The clock on the wall seems to tick too loud as I go back to my tea and scan the newspaper. I look up when he speaks again. I don't need your say-so. I don't need your approval. And I certainly don't need you. His face is twisted with hate. He's obviously terrified, but trying to hide it with contempt. I don't know who he thinks I am, and for a second I'm lost for anything to say. I'm never coming back, and I'm never saying sorry. He glares at me, as though daring me to. I don't know. Get it now, Dad. Ah. Tom. Tommy, I'm not going to say I understand, or I like it, but if it makes you happy, well, then I'm glad. If we can't be friends anymore, let's at least not be enemies. Please, son. I stick out my hand gruffly for him to shake. After a startled silence, he reaches out and shakes it briefly, nervously, confused, then quickly turns away. It was only a year ago he started to forget things. Little things at first, then more. Appointments, old friends, then whole years of his life. Once he went out for a walk, leaving the front door open, and just stood outside in the street, lost. Sometimes he'd look at me, puzzled, as though struggling to remember who I was. There were times I found him looking in the mirror, troubled by some vague wrongness that he could never put his finger on, as though there was something not quite right about the face looking back. But then he'd look away and seem perfectly lucid again. Paul, he croaks. Paul, my name. What will it be like? There's a contented smile on his lips, and he's looking away shyly. 
What do you mean? I ask. When we are old together. Because I think we will be together when we are old men. I know it's only been a few months, and I know it sounds silly, but I've just got a feeling about it. What will it be like? I take his hand again. It will be exactly like it is now. <laughs>